Okay. Hi. It's me. Uh, I'm going to make this video to show how to use this bath mat weaving loom that I've made. Uh, this video will be starring Nala, who is probably not going to move very much for the next hour, uh, and supervised by Mr. Jack, who is the uh, genius behind the curtain, of course. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first thing, the layout on the board. I'm going to explain all these different markings as we go. It'll make a little more sense to show further on. Um, but what we're going to start, though, is using these lines, we're going to start drawing our grid of rope. We're not going to do what uh, you might first expect, which would be this sort of like alternating S-curve thing, um, which is what you might be familiar with if you've done lattice weaving. This is, every time we hit a post, we're actually going to turn 90 degrees and it's going to sort of follow this oddball shape that's going to take us all the way around. It's going to look a little weird, but as we finish it, you're going to see that uh, it will come out into a nice rectangular grid pattern. So first thing we're going to do is, uh, it's going to be a little tricky with one hand, um, pick an end of the rope that is going to be your fixed end. Uh, I'm going to use this end because it has a big knot on it and I don't feel like cutting it off and pick your starting point. I always just start on one of the corner posts um, just to make it easy to remember. Um, and then you're going to start laying that out. So we can do this with one hand. <laughs> and just turning 90 degrees every time you hit the post. we're going to come to a point where we need to intersect two ropes. And that's where all these other little markings come in. It's an easy way to remember um, which of the two intersecting ropes is going to go on top. So let's look at where the ropes are going to meet and we'll see all these little tick marks. And what that's going to tell us is which of the two ropes is going to need to go on bottom. So I'm going to put this rope to the bottom here like so. And that way, uh, once we finish, we'll have a nice alternating grid pattern throughout. So we'll check it back in in a few more turns. Two things uh, to point out right away. You want to be constantly flaking this rope out, which is just straightening it with your hand um, to make sure that it doesn't start building up a lot of loops. Uh, otherwise, you know, with a 40 foot piece of rope is going to get tangled really fast. The other thing, uh, as we go, these ropes are straight now, but they're going to end up having this very wavy shape. So if we start with the ropes very tight, there's not going to be any give later on and it's going to compress and stretch the mat into a very non-rectangular shape. So leave, um, leave some extra flop, some extra slack in there so those ropes can uh, be stretched out later on as we really wind this tight. When you get to outside corners, just 180 degrees. So we're a little further on, we're probably about a third of the way through the first wrap now. You know, it looks and feels like we've done a ton. Um, most of these posts still have nothing wrapped around them, so uh, we've got a ways to go. And the more we get in, the more tension there's going to be in the system. So I'm just going to stop and check, make sure, and just give a little tug all the way around, make sure nothing feels too tight, otherwise we can back feed some rope. Um, as you can tell by the shape of the board here, there is a... Uh, issue with tension building up and it's already cupped this board up quite a bit so check that. Alright so we're uh, just about finished our first round here. Uh, Nala is still napping possibly in the exact same position as before. Uh, Jack the genius behind the curtain still a genius behind the curtain uh, just over behind this curtain and a little more sleepy of a genius. Uh, yeah. Another cutscene and another unlicensed music track. Uh, we are here. I have finished the first pass, and I know that because the two ends of my rope have finally met at the corner where I started. Um, the next step is the most tedious and all-important step, and it kind of turns this from looking like a jumbled mess into a nice professional mat, and that's balancing. Um, so if your hands aren't sore yet, they, they're about to be. Because uh, what we're going to have to do is, maybe an easier angle here, we're going to see, looking for loose points, 
and all these like high ridges where there's extra tension versus these points where it's very tight. Um, this is also time to take note of these markings around the outside. And it doesn't matter which one you pick, but right now we're going to apply one of these to the first wrap, which is uh, actually, if you wanted an open mat, uh, you could be done right now, or if you were using a much thicker rope, uh, this 10 mil climbing rope, you'd be done right now. Um, but this is, um, the one I'm showing you is double wrap. So I'm just going to say silver is the first wrap. And as we're going around, when I add the second wrap, uh, and this is going to make more sense later on, I might cut this part out, um, but I want a gap on all the silver ones right now and tight on all the black ones. And then later on when I double this up, the second wrap is going to go to the inside of this one, but to the outside of this one. So that's why I want these different tension all the way around. I want slack on the silver posts. As an added bonus to anybody who watches the video all the way through before they start, you can get this bonus tip, which is put down a towel before you start, unless you really don't like your table, because this thing is uh, not exactly table friendly. Okay, so I'm gonna try and explain balancing as best as I can here. Um, it's much easier to show, but you really need two hands for it. But basically what I do is I start at one end of the rope um, and I'll intentionally introduce a large bit of slack into the system. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to slowly work it all the way through. And this is going to take me probably, I don't know, a half hour, 40 minutes to actually do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very methodically make sure that my tension is equal all the way throughout just by pushing flat, making sure that my rope has contact with the board all the way through and that there's no slack and the tight parts are gonna eat up this tension, the loose parts are gonna or eat up this slack, the loose parts are gonna create more slack, and by the time I make it through, um, it'll all pull out the other side and it should look much more even. Uh, so I'm gonna keep working away at that. All right, so I'm reasonably satisfied with how balanced and straightened this is. Um, and you can see I've Got a little bit of slack built in around the silver posts, and this will allow for a little extra room for the second rope to go inside, and a little less room when it goes on the outside, so that it doesn't uh, contort itself. Um, the more rope I add now, the tighter this is going to get, so it's going to be good to keep this on the loom as long as possible until it becomes virtually impossible to feed through, uh, and that'll help keep the shape as it goes. Um, I'm gonna get my second rope ready and then I'll show you how to start feeding the second rope in. Okay, so I've cut the two ends off, melted them just a tiny bit so they don't fray, and made sure that it's fed back a little bit from the corner where I started. Uh, ready to start feeding my second rope through and just wherever I've gapped it out around the posts, I know that's the side I want it, my second rope to the inside. Um, and I'm gonna start winding it, feeding it through from here. And eventually it's going to finish off coming uh, back around the inside here. Uh, and once we get both of those done, uh, we should have both brakes at the same point and we should be able to weld those together with a rope cutter um, and close the loop off. All right, I'm about a third of the way through the second pass. Uh, I've taken it off the loom because it's gotten too hard to feed and at this point I'm pretty much just feeding you know a single um, intersection at a time and pulling the whole rope behind um, and working around a little sleepy puppy. Feed that back in later on. Okay, okay, hi. So I have cut the ropes here to length uh, and fed them through where I want the splice. I'm gonna make sure that both my splices are on the same side because they're gonna show up as little black marks and that's gonna be the bottom of my mat later on. Um, so the rope cutter is hot and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull these as tight as I can to get the, a little bit of slack out of it, press these two ends together and then just sort of fold them over this hot knife and press them close as I do. 
Uh, be very, very careful not to severely burn myself. And the last step is I've got these little burr seams made by the melted rope. I'm going to use the rope cutter just as best as I can to try and flatten those guys out. Uh, so if it does get flipped over, you don't want to step on those sharp bits. So I'm just going to contort them out a little bit. 